All right. Well, here we are at the start of another segment. We are going to get uh, right into putting in a cabin in here, and then we'll put in some trees a little closer up, and I do think we're going to get to uh, be putting in a little frozen pond action. So, uh, palette's still the same. I look like I've gotten some sun since the last video. Well, I did. Uh, Brandon and I just went out and played golf, and he thumped me pretty good, so... You see little tears rolling out of my eyes? That's what happened. But anyhow, let's get right back into our painting. Now, Bob shows us a few different ways to do cabins, and cabins are, well, just like anything else, something to practice a little, and you can, you, you can, gosh, you can put it wherever you want, and you can scratch it in like this if you want to do it that way, and then sort of scratch off where you probably have the roof, and we're not committed to anything yet. We're just, just taking off if there's any excess paint there. We'll have a little spot for the back eave. Oh, we'll have some here. You can probably hear that I'm scraping awfully hard to get this extra paint off here. That's just going to make putting the roof and then the sides on a little bit easier. So, don't know if you can see. Hmm, not sure. We'll see. If you can see that, wonderful. The roof, though, on a cabin in a cold winter scene like this is really kind of the easy part. So pull that run of titanium white out, good and flat. Cut across or down in it. You can even get a pretty good glob of paint. And now you can just sort of decide where you're going to set the edges. Just kind of give it a little push. It's a little, little clumpy and isn't perfectly straight. That's all right. We're just roughened in right now. And then we're going to pull the angle of our roof. Let's grab some more paint. You can lay it on pretty thick if you want to. And just kind of decide where your roof's going to go out to. I think I wanted to go a little further than that, so let's kind of give ourselves a little edge to follow out to here. There we go. Now we'll just fill it in. And I'm going to do this probably a couple times. I like to put a little chimney on my cabins. Saw Bob do that in a couple of them. I even will put some smoke out of them from time to time. So we just need to get ourselves a good start. A good start. We'll come back and clean up that edge here after a little while. So let's set this back edge of where the roof, roof line would be. We can really just touch and let the canvas pull off what, it's, what it wants there. So we're going to tuck our back eave under there. So I'm going to hit just a little bit of Van Dyke Brown here and get that back eave snuck in right underneath that white that we just put in there. Need that to be good and dark. Good and dark. So now we can pick up some white. See how this looks to us, if we're happy with this. Yeah, we're just going to pull in something like that. I'm going to pull in, oh, let's get a little marbly mix here of brown and white. A little more brown. And see what we get here. There we go. Do this back and forth a couple times till you get a color that you like. Just want it to look like old wood. There we go. Now on this other side, down the the side where the sun wouldn't be hitting, because the mountain tells us our light's coming from that side. Want a little bit darker color. So just get in here, and we may darken that up some still. A couple of things on a cabin. Make this non-sunny side the darkest. That just helps give it dimension and some depth. Pull it down a little bit further as you come forward. Have these sides a little bit further down and shorter back there. That's kind of a sneaky way to help have your perspective right. I like to switch to the small blade of the knife and set this edge here so that's good and dark. We'll put some lines of wood in here. We'll put a door in the front. We can just kind of keep, keep, keep tinkering a little bit. You don't want to overdo it with your cabin. But you do want to make it 
a place this old fisherman or old trapper can get in out of the frigid winter. Frigid winter. Frigid winter. There we go. Let's put a door in the front. Again, I like to use a small knife. So let's just put ourselves in a front door. We're going to sneak over and grab some liquid white. So I'm just taking the lid off the jar, going into that liquid white with my knife, smush it out here on my palette so I can pick up a little, little tiny bit on my short edge of my knife and just run it up the side here, run a little snow across the top of my eave and then down this other side. I like to make that look a little rough. I really do. Let's cut in a few boards. So clean, dry knife. Let's just cut in a few vertical stripes that'll look kind of like <clears throat> boards. And take a little darker color and put it right on that corner if you really need to set it off a little better. It looks like I need to do that on this one. Need to get a little color right up next to this over here. You can see my hand a little shaky. You don't have to have a perfectly steady hand to do this. You got a little too much paint here at the bottom. Just give a little scrape, a little cabinectomy. Just be careful. Don't want to pull too much down into your snow there. If yellow snow is bad, brown snow is worse. So let's grab some more white and really finish off this snowy, snowy roof. Oh, I like putting a lot of snow on the roof. Thick, thick paint here. I love how it gets a little bit stringy and still breaks a little bit like the uh, snow on a mountain. So we're going to just kind of finish it off. I like to do a few icicles coming off the side of my... I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's pulling off a little bit when I'm touching it and letting the knife pull straight off, because there's no slide with my knife when I'm setting the edge like this. Just touch and let the canvas pull off what it wants. Gives me back the rest. It just looks like thick, thick snow. And then we'll, like I said, we'll dot some little icicles off of there in just a minute. Let's finish off this top part. A little bit more snow. A little bit more snow. Just pull it right down to there. There we go. See, and some of this can look like it melted and refroze and snowed again. There we go. So there is that part of our cabin. We're going to clean up the bottom with some snow and all that. So let's put a chimney on this bad boy. I'm going to take my script liner brush. I've got a little jar of paint thinner over here. And I'm just going to spin this into a little bit of our Van Dyke Brown and turn it in there. Kind of wiggle it around. I don't know if you can see that. I don't want it to run into all my purple, but that is thin like ink. And I'm twisting it, twisting it, twisting it, so it'll just come to a nice point. This little brush will hold a lot of paint. To put a chimney on here, just touch and pull down toward your snow. Touch. Pull down toward your snow. If it hits your snow, that's totally fine because you can really make it sit down in there. I'm going to hit that brown again. I really want that to be a dark, dark brown. There we go. So there's our chimney. How about a little fence action on this one? That'll be, that's always fun. Let's just make a fence. We'll kind of have our fence walking off, oh, over this way somewhere. So we'll just make some fence posts and just have them shape a little bit and lean a little bit. And as they get further away from us, they should get smaller and a little lighter. And then maybe that last one just sort of disappears over there. Or maybe it's a little fatter post. Let's pick up a little brown. We'll do some <clears throat> cross members on our little fence here. A little boulder here by the cabin. Now what in the world is this? This old guy who lives out here need a fence for? My guess is his wife said she wanted a fence, but um, what exactly said fence would be for, I'm not sure. What you're either trying to keep in or keep out. 
But if I lived out here and the lovely Mrs. Wilcox said she wanted a fence, you know what we'd have? We'd have a fence, so it doesn't really matter. That's, that's how that works. I know how that works. All right, so we've cleaned off our brush in the paint thinner, got rid of the rest of that brown, going straight into some titanium white. Oh yeah, I've already got some over here from uh, doing the door jam. So let's put some smoke out of that. I like to thin down a little liquid white. Now, if you got some shake in your hand, that's good. Just start at the top of your chimney and then just kind of think like smoke. Just sort of let it, what does smoke do? Is it just sort of fades away and rides away? That's all you got to do. That was all just shaking and turning the brush in my hand. So nothing magic about that. You can grab a little more uh, tight air, excuse me, liquid white. Just go across the tops your fence posts like they picked up some snow this does not have to be exact don't worry about trying to trace it perfectly don't touch a few of the tops there you can like they're holding some snow don't try to do that perfectly because it'll all just look like spots if you do now let's put some snow in front of that so we're going to grab our fan brush that we used for snow before and we're going to do the exact same thing this time, I'm going to start at the fence and just pull away. In a few places, I'll just barely touch the bottom of those fence posts. It'll grab them. It'll pull a little shadow down into my snow. That's totally fine. It completely plants them and makes those look like they are just holding up that magical part of the fence. Doesn't that look great? If you want to and feel like you need to, you can take your dark brush that you had that blue on it. You probably still got enough from what we did there. You can dance in a few more shadows down here if you feel like you want them. I kind of like how some of these turned out, so let's add a few. Why not? I just like the texture, the depth, the dimension, that extra layer that it kind of just gives us there. Why don't we have some of this coming out of our cabin? We'll clean up this this walkway here a little bit and he's going to need a way to get down to this pond I keep talking about so let's just have it get a little wider a little wider a little wider as it comes down here and we're going to have that have that happen here in just a minute so let's put in a little more snow we'll do something on this side of the cabin as well so let's just kind of have some snow maybe it's kind of blowing into our Pass there a little bit. We're just setting it back in there, giving it some depth and dimension. So when I come past this barn over here, my cabin, I'm going to do it in one swell foop, foop, right on past, because I do not want to drag that brown down into my beautiful snow. So just get your snow coming off that fan brush and go for it. And then we're just going to have, there we go. Oh, you know what? Why don't we sneak some windows in on the side of that little cabin there? Eh, maybe not. Ah, eh, maybe so. What's it? Why not? I said it. I thought it. Let's do it. Got to just go for it, right? When that kind of stuff happens, just decide. Put it in there. There we go. Now we'll put, figure out some kind of pond down there in a minute. But let's put in a little window action, you say? All right, we'll just grab a little, a little bit of lighter color. Might actually have to make that a tidge darker. Get it to show up there for us. A window. A little window. A little bit of the thick sill there at the bottom. That's all right. We'll grab some titanium white. Excuse me, liquid white. Put it right across the tops of our windows. Let's grab another fresh bit. Put it right there at the bottom. Right there at the bottom. Little side action. 
Oh, the snow got built up on our windows out there. And if you wanted to, you could always just grab and pull this way and pull that way. Give yourself a little bit of window pane to those if you like. There we go. Oh, I promised you some uh, icicle kind of things off of this cap. And let's do that too. So I'm just going to touch, touch, touch into a tiny little bit of liquid white. And just bump down a few points here. That's all it takes. Straight down though. Most icicles will come straight down unless it's real windy. And just knock a few of these points that were there before down. I like to leave some of them there. I just think that looks really cool. I just feel like I need a little, a little snow pulled in right here. Just kind of using the liquid white just so it will soften real easy and warm. My thinner paint needs to stick to a thicker paint. I just want to pull in a little snow across some of our pathway there. There we go. Let's leave that alone. So let's move on to uh, <clears throat> trees at the front of this. And you know what? For a cabin practice, that, uh, that turned out okay. You can always step back and find ways to, to improve your cabin. A couple of pointers have this front point be a little bit higher than your back point and practice getting that eave so it, it looks, well, quite frankly, so it looks a little better than the one I gave you there. But that's just preference, so you can keep messing with them, keep practicing, keep learning. If you see an area you just really got to add something to, you can come back and add it if you want. But just smooth it in, smooth it in. Remember, I uh, cut in some board, so when this dries especially, if you go back and do any changes like that, just add a little something so it'll tie right in. And that'll work out okay for you. Messed up the bottom of that, adding that little bit there, so we'll just add a little snow at its foot. There, I actually think that looks a little better. And normally that doesn't happen when you piddle with it like that. All right, let's stop this one, and we're going to finish this up with the foreground. I'm seeing a couple of trees here and here. We'll do a pretty little pond, and get this one finished up. Be back in a few minutes.